I'm Stacey West from Fun Caliber, and today I'm joined by Julian Cook, Portfolio Specialist for the T. Road Price U.S. Large Cap Growth Fund. Julian, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Now, last year was a brutal one for U.S. large companies. Why this spectacular fall from grace? What happened? Yeah, well, I, I think we really have to go back to you know, November 2021, um, and it was really the, the change in the market environment of higher inflation and higher interest rates uh, that caused a significant rotation, um, particularly between growth and value companies in the U.S., uh, but also had a detrimental effect on, on overall market levels. Now, now, some of those inflationary influences were initially thought to be more kind of transitory and sort of temporary in nature. I think as you've seen as our experience in the UK also, you know, that is actually taking a little bit sort of longer, you know, to sort of feed through the system, you know, wage negotiations, you know, teachers on strike, you know, rails on strike. So so that's kind of you know taking a longer while to sort of you know filter through all elements of the economy. And I think once it became apparent that inflation was sort of hanging around for a bit longer, um, and interest rates were gonna be staying higher for longer. Um, then that really, I guess, you know, led to a sort of a, a change in, in attitudes towards, um, you know, the, you know the U.S. equity valuations, and was essentially you know, ultimately detrimental to you know, market levels. And this fund has forty five percent in IT. So, uh, what gives you this level of confidence in in the sector? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess just just to be clear, at, at T Rowe Price. You know, we we don't wake up in the morning and decide we want to be overweight IT. You know, what do we buy? Um, we we basically select companies on a stock by stock basis, um, and and so so every single tech company holding that we have reflects our confidence uh, in sort of the uh, the materiality and the likelihood of of that of that materiality you know coming to pass um, in that particular company. So we, we're trying to. F- I guess find companies on a stock by stock basis look really, really attractive to us. And as it turns out, when we when we look for growth companies in the US, we're looking for companies where we can find you know growth in excess of you know fourteen percent nominal. So that's real plus inflation. And we find lots of those opportunities in technology, quite frankly. So so we're trying to position ourselves today for kind of the exit of you know the next recession. We think we're getting a recession in the US. Um, and our technology companies we hold today we think look looks super attractive on a on a two to three year view. Now, whether they whether it's going to be the ideal moment in time in the next six months in terms of you know, owning that company, you could still be a little bit offside if you do get a recession. And we and obviously that's our that's our core our core thesis. Um, but on a two three year view, a lot of these technology companies to us look um, you know, extremely well positioned, look very you know, strategically important to their customers, and, and most importantly, you know, self-financing from a free cash flow perspective. So we're not buying, um, you know, profitless IT companies in this strategy. We're, we're finding really strategically important companies that have, you know, great free cash flow to support their valuations as we look at, you know, two, three years. Perhaps slightly longer uh, time horizon. Is there other areas that you think could be winners of the next decade? Or are you still considering tech for that time horizon as well? Yeah, so so when we look at the market in the U.S., you know, we really find growth companies um, in sort of you know four main areas. So so obviously we can find them in in IT, but also let's not forget you can find you know, some great growth companies in healthcare. Uh, healthcare is actually one of our biggest overweights relative to our benchmark. Um, you also find growth companies in in communication services. Um, and also in consumer discretionary. So out of those four areas, uh, we tend to find you know, growth companies there. So I'd say healthcare would be a name, uh, an area, I beg your pardon, uh, a sector where we still have you know, you know great expectations of uh, of that area you know, delivering good results for clients. And Bank of America recently said that they've seen the biggest rotation out of U.S. equities in a decade. Do you think that it's a mistake for investors to leave the U.S. now? Well, let's let's look back. I mean, you know, the U.S. has been a very successful place to invest. Um, you know, certainly over the last ten years. So, so maybe not surprising that that some are looking to allocate away from the region. Um, I think the attributes of the U.S., however, you know, shouldn't be overlooked. Now, now the main for me, the main attributes of the U.S. market is you know very deep capital markets uh, in private and in venture capital. You know, world-leading innovation. Uh, you know, single 
you know, largest single you know, domestic market globally with a pro-business culture. Now, all of those elements, I think, give you uh, lots of good reasons to consider the U.S. Um, you know, as an investment. I think it's it's possibly a little bit too cute, maybe, to sort of time exactly when you can be out and when you can be when you can be in. Um, but I think as a, as a long-term investor looking to you know, get exposure to, to I think what are a pretty unique and you know, unreplicatable set of you know, uh, you know attributes, the U.S. to me still looks like a very very good place to uh, to invest money. And perhaps we can wrap up with a few of the lesser-known names in the portfolio, um, and then maybe just give viewers an idea of how these how large these companies are in comparison to perhaps a UK large cap that people may be more familiar with. Yeah, certainly. So, so I, I mentioned healthcare a moment ago. Um, you know, one of the names that, that, that we own in healthcare in, is in health insurance um, is a company called Cigna. And and Cigna, I mean, if if you think about, um, I, I, we, we're in, we're insured by Cigna at Tiro Price, right? So so if I need to go to the uh, go to the physiotherapist, whatever, I can go and you know claim on my on my Cigna insurance. What makes Cigna to us a really attractive business is it's a short cycle insurance business whereby you can change the premiums that you charge on an annual basis. If you get your underwriting wrong, you can sort of say, you can correct, um, and you can change the benefits. You can change the deductibles. You know, how much copay is there? So lots of lots of sort of buttons and levers you can you can press in terms of buttons, levers you can pull to change the underwriting of that business, and you can reprice and maybe hit your you know desired level of growth. Um, this is a company which is which is a hundred billion dollars in market cap. Uh, it employs like seventy five thousand people. If it was in the FTSE, it would be in the top ten. Um, and so maybe that's surprising for some for some of your audience out there that there's a, a, a company they may not have heard of, which could easily you know, make it into the top 10 in the FTSE. Um, another company we have in, in sort of business services is a company called Fiserv. Um, Fiserv is in like the transaction processing, electronic bill payments, process, you know, business process outsourcing. That again would be in the top 10 in the FTSE. Uh, it's about a $67 billion market cap company. Um, a company we think can, can generate you know, very decent growth Durably, you know, year in, year out, you know, above that fourteen percent hurdle growth rate that we set ourselves. Um, so, so when I think about the U.S., I, I see you know, opportunities in companies like these uh, that may not be necessarily sort of household names to people sort of sitting here in the U.K., um, but are very well established, you know, very successful businesses, uh, you know, very uh, you know, reasonable valuations, we'd say, um, and and and, and you know, very significant uh, you know, market cap sizes uh, to boot. Well, thank you for those examples. That's great. I think it will be uh, quite a shock that companies you've never heard of are so large. <laughs> um, but that's been a great update. Thank you very much, Julian, for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. And for more information on the TiVo Price U.S. Large Cap Growth Fund, please visit fundcaliber.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe below for more interviews.